Um, okay, call the meeting to order. Um, this is the uh, public hearing. Uh, it's the uh, uh, meeting of the Vale School Reuse Committee, and um, tonight we are basically here for a public hearing to get public input. Um, and it appears from looking in the audience that we're going to have very little. Um, but uh, in any event, um, let's just move through the agenda. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 12th meeting? So I can make a motion to approve uh, the minutes from February 12th, as written. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Um, we have March 5th meeting uh, minutes. They, we don't have them here, so we can't vote on those. Um, we do have a public hearing. Didn't we? <coughs> that was the next thing on the agenda, right? The public hearing was the next thing on the agenda? Yes. So let's move right to it. Um, take a number, please, so we <laughs> make sure we get everybody. Please, not um, all at once. <laughs> well, in any event, um, the committee um, was charged with looking at uh, possible reuses for the Beale School, uh, the property, uh, either renovating the school, tear down, whatever, finding some. Uh, what might be possible reuses for the school in the event that uh, the Beale School replacement is built. Uh, as part of that process, um, the committee has um, reviewed uh, the master plan, we reviewed the facility study, uh, we toured the building, uh, we reviewed the uh, two grants that um, the planning staff has, um, has submitted for um, to study uh, various aspects of the town center, one of which we were awarded a grant of $15,000 um, for um, a parking study. The other one isn't, um, isn't uh, it hasn't been awarded yet, um, but we're hopeful that we're going to get it. Um, so um, the next step in the process really before we got moving was to uh, solicit uh, comments from the public um, which we um, had hoped we would get. Um, so, at, I guess at this point, um, is there anybody here who would like to speak? No. I'm from the Shrewsbury Chronicle. Okay. Okay. You want to so speak? I'll just speak for Ms. the sake Cassette? of speaking. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> Um, I'm Lisa Cosette, and I'm here not as a representative of Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury Development Corporation, but um, I was coming to listen to public comment about the reuse. I unfortunately missed your last meeting, March 5th, um, so I don't, I don't have any comments to make on behalf of the Shrewsbury Development Corporation, but we were very interested to hear public comment on reuse of the building. Um, I will go and look at the March 5th meeting to see what uh, scenarios you possibly discussed. But I know um, we are interested in redevelopment of the town center and particularly um, for use of parking and making it more walkable. But I was hoping to hear more interest in that tonight from others. That's all. Um, okay, thank you. Um, anyone else? Okay. Um, <coughs> well, to your point, <coughs> Um, it doesn't look like we have much participation. Um, we did we did discuss um, generally what it might be used for. Obviously, no conclusions yet. Um, we talked about possibly um, somebody renovating the building for various uses. Maybe for, correct me if I'm wrong, fellow members. Um, possibly some um, some retail, um, some residential offices. Um, we talked about the possibility of the uh, of, um, perhaps the building um, should be torn down. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the site in general and whether or not the ball field, if we did dispose of the property, if the ball field should be part of it. Um, and then we'd have to find a place for a replacement for the ball field because <coughs> um, we really need the field. It doesn't have to be there, but we need it. Um, and uh, Mr. Massiello had suggested that um, probably one of the best things we could do is to go out uh, and ask for RFPs at the appropriate time. And um, 
not uh, put as little, as few um, restrictions on what could be done with the property as possible. Obviously, there's zoning issues in that. Um, but in discussion with that, we all agreed that that probably would give us the best opportunity to find out um, what um, developers, contractors, whatever, um, thought could be done with the property. Um, and see, let's see what their proposals were. Um, that um, realistically is probably what, a good two years away before we go up to an RFP? I think. Um, when you dispose of surplus property, there <coughs> is a limit to the time frame that you have to turn it over. Well, we so don't have to, we don't, we're not going, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, we're you not. You can't say who wants to buy this property in 2035. No, so right. as I'm saying, it's at least two years away before we, we, we start anything. It's probably longer than that. Right. It could be three or four years. <laughs> That's true. Um, so um, as part of the process, um, we did um, we did send letters to uh, the school committee and the board of selectmen asking if the town, uh, if they felt uh, either the school department or the other town departments would be interested in um, reuse of that property. Uh, we got a, a <coughs> we got a letter back from um, Dr. McGee. Um, chairman of the school committee essentially saying that uh, you know it, it's too early to say but if if Theo is replaced that they don't perceive that they would have any need for it um, or uh, have any interest in using it um, and uh, John LeBeau chairman of the selectmen uh, sent in a letter essentially saying the same for for the, for the other town departments. So um, it appears going forward, and this could change, you know, three or four years from now, that, that sentiment could change, but um, there really is no interest right now in okay. trying to use that property. Okay, I have a follow-up to have uh, the local downtown businesses been <coughs> contacted at all about their needs? Not yet. Okay. Would it be, um, so Facebook being the, the place where all facts occur, and I say that in <laughs> jest, um, I, I did post the, um, the hearing notice, and there were just a couple feedback, a couple comments that we got for feedback that I would like to share, um, and they all really do fall into the same bucket, and it was a um, town-sponsored art and music center. Um, that seemed to gain some interest on Facebook. Um, and then um, there was a lot of comments about the need for extended day school options for children and one additional comment about housing for the elderly, which is the second or third time we've heard that. Um, and so those were the comments that I've gotten on online. So if I may, maybe to add a little <coughs> color or clarity to that. All of those endeavors, while <coughs> possibly and potentially excellent uses for the property, would need some independent third party to come in and assume responsibility. The town of Shrewsbury is certainly not, <coughs> at least by the purview of this committee, and certainly what we've been told, interested in opening an after school, opening an art center, opening a daycare. So um, those are all viable options, but to Mr. Massiello's point, it would have to be at the purview of a developer coming in saying, I think the best use for this property would be X, Y, or Z, as Ms. Lynch just said, and then proceeding down that path. I just don't want to give anyone um, at home or the false impression that <coughs> either this is a, a net new business derivative for uh, the town of Shrewsbury, because it's not. We're trying to maximize the value of the town. Do you, do you, do you agree with that, Mr. Chair? Or? No, I think that's, I think I think that's, that's worth just really explaining one, so you're you're trying to put another tax roll, is the right, idea. Exactly the point. I, I didn't want to be so black and white, but yes, the idea is to get the, the, most, <coughs> the greatest long-term potential revenue for the property versus a, a selling of the building versus um, a developer redeveloping the property and paying taxes on it. Right, and it, there's, there's two facets to that, is um, the sale price, um, obviously you get the cash up front 
And then there's a tax revenue component to it. And we're nowhere near far enough along yet to have any idea of what um, either of those numbers would be. Um, we, know what, we know what the school is assessed at, but that, that's a number that's being carried on the, assessor, uh, on the assessor's books. That doesn't mean that that's what, in the end, we could get. We could get less. We could get the, the amount. We could get more. Um, I think it's way too far down the road to, to be able to even predict what it might be. That's right. This is really the first <coughs> in many steps for this process, and I think it's really an effort on the town's part to be proactive. Uh, we're, we've approached this with a clean slate. Um, there's no set agenda. It's really a lot of it, I think, is fact-finding and educating ourselves and, and putting the first pieces in place so that when the time comes for decisions down the road that we've taken the appropriate steps. But this is really just the beginning, I think, of yeah. a very long process. I just didn't want to get, I completely exactly. agree. I didn't want to give yep. anyone the impression that of those three choices, we're going to land on one, you know, because we may not land on any and it may not even be our call. That's the point. <coughs> Well, let me say it certainly will not be our call. Right, right. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. It's so far um, above our pay grade here that it's, it's right. laughable. I think, but I, I think that we we need to proceed with maximizing the value that's returned to the town. We have nearly five acres of what's commercially zoned, sitting right in the middle of Shrewsbury. I think to turn that over to a nonprofit <laughs> or multifamily or any type drain on the town it, it would be foolish I think we've really got a chance here to put this out to bid to the highest and best value and I think the less restrictions <coughs> we put on this the better this property will be received in the marketplace would, would it be fair to just um, state that for um, the record um, the tax value as assumed by the tax assessor right now um, it's assessed at four million and um, the estimated taxes on that are fifty thousand and just to clarify that the um, the size of the parcel is three point eight six acres so right um, I hadn't seen the it's uh, quite even um, there, I, I did put a map up on the on the easel um, obviously I don't know how to use that kind of easel um, just so people get an idea of, uh, I think most people know where Beale School is, but um, it is strategically located right at the center of town, um, so it, it could have it could have a, a good value depending on what's there. <coughs> um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak? See you? No. Then then we'll continue our discussion, and if anybody wants to add into it or ask questions, um, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, there is a way, um, and I'm not saying we should or we shouldn't, but um, one way to get uh, a nonprofit use of the property, um, if, if that was an option the town had decided on, would be to have a private investor buy it and lease it to the nonprofit. Um, that, <coughs> that serves the purpose of getting uh, money on the tax roll, um, take, I'll get the property on the tax roll, generate some um, income from it, um, and it, it serves the need of a, uh, of a non-profit. It probably is not going to be the highest use of that property, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think, but it is possible. <coughs> Nonprofits do that all the time, uh, partly because they can't afford to pay the price up front, and they do lease arrangements with an investor, so it is an option. Um, my sense from uh, my colleagues on the board is that at least his current board of selectmen wants to see it on the tax rolls um, and wants to see uh, see it for its highest and best use of that property, whatever that might be determined to be at the time. Um, but it, I, my sense is you're not going to see a lot of interest um, in taking that building over and trying to renovate it into something that the town could use. Anybody have any thoughts, other thoughts? I think you pretty much <coughs> said everything that we had this dealt is with over the last few weeks. If we get, if we don't have anybody else who wants to make comments, when we get done within six minutes, I'll 
beat the fastest meeting record that anybody on the Board of Selectmen has ever had. So. <laughs> well, <coughs> did we talk about parking? Have we talked about sure. that aspect? Um, sure. Go ahead. Just the idea that there's such a lack of parking in downtown Shrewsbury, and um, so there are some people that have suggested it would be um, a good use, maybe the back lot, um, turning that into parking if the front became some commercial use, it would make sense for a municipal parking lot. That's been something that we've discussed. Right. And the um, the grant that I mentioned earlier um, is um, to actually um, analyze the parking, seeing if there's any opportunities through cross parking, shared parking on the private properties, and if, and if the BO property fits into that. Um, that's something I think that we would discuss with the planning department because they are actually going to do that study um, and they're going to be looking at the larger area. So um, that, that is a consideration. We know that that's an issue. Um, and they, once they get going on the grant, they're going to, they're going to, one of the first things they're going to do excuse me, is um, um, do an analysis of what's there and then actually talk to the businesses to try to get input um, get their feelings on, on what might be done to be able to maximize the parking there. Anyone else? We have <coughs> the oh, I'm sorry. I actually have a question. Sorry. Sure. I've never done this before. <laughs> is there, um, is, are there certain restrictions on what would be allowable there height-wise? Um, the town the zoning, zoning is by what? Because it's zoned commercially, so I didn't know if that, if that would come into effect. Three and a half stories still, right? So it wouldn't be allowable to be taller than the existing building? There's both, a, um, there's both a height restriction in terms of number of stories and overall, overall height. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. My name's Lee Abdella, and I'm a resident here in town and current mother of current kindergartner at said Beale building. Um, Can I just say one other thing? Yep. One thing that we have talked about was um, the architectural integrity of the building um, and how we all thought that it, 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 there is some integrity. Um, whether that ends up standing in place is a question that still remains, but um, we've certainly talked about the World War I um, memorial in front and um, some of the exterior parts of the building that have some real architectural appeal so something to think about saving right. for another use or <coughs> right. one of the comments I had made um, that I think you're referring to the facade comment yes the, uh, there's not a lot of words in your mouth <laughs> Thank you. um, is if that building were to come down and the new <coughs> Beale school were to be built in one of the two locations under consideration the um, the top dead center of the building is the giant concrete facade that says I believe uh, General Beale High School major. Yeah. major. Um, we, I had suggested to the board, and we had agreed that it would be a um, solid initiative if we were able to salvage that single piece of concrete and have that be X use at a future building a sign, a corner, a stand, a pole, or something like some prominent use. Um, and I, I think that's what yep. Chris was referring to. So that was a consideration in the event that the building <coughs> were to um, be torn down. We would very few restrictions, but if we were going to go with the teardown route, I think this this board agreed that, that would be a restriction we'd like to ask for. And uh, as far as the monument, um, the monument under any scenario, um, I think we can say with almost 100% certainty is not going to move, and it was built to stay, right? I think the contract would <laughs> have to move the whole thing four feet to the right. It was moved closer to the street. Exactly. Just, just, a, just a little so bit. It wouldn't impinge the yeah, school use. Right. Or right, so, so it's, right. it's out of the way. That's really right. already been spoken for. Right. <laughs> so three feet to the right. <laughs> yeah, right. He's, um, yes, that, <coughs> that was part of the initial design so, criteria, and the old monument was actually further back on the site. Yeah, it was quite a bit. Right. Uh, we did um, get um, an email from Gail Aslanian. Um, essentially supporting the idea of some kind of an art center. Uh, and we did get an email, again, excuse me, for uh, um, from the Little League, right? Yeah, it was from 
uh, Don Gale, <coughs> Dave Walker, and Jeff Ash representing Shrewsbury Little League, um, asking that the field either stay there or if it has to be sold off or whatever, um, that it be replicated somewhere else in town. Right. And I believe that's, is that all the correspondence we had? Um, there was is there from additional John Lebeau from the Board of Select. No, no, I know about yeah. that. The deal, and I, I mean from the. Those are two, uh, the, the Art Center and the Little League. Yeah. Yep. Two that I don't see. Okay. The property on Municipal Ave, <coughs> I know Selco owns right of ways for the um, high voltage line that runs through. But is there more town land over there that would be suitable for a, uh, a new ball field? Because that um, would be moving it right. less so than a quarter of a mile. And we're actually doing a master plan, so we are looking at if it can be if anything else can fit there. Mm -hmm. There is some wetlands back there, so I'm not sure how much mm -hmm. further. But we are through the Parks Commission looking at that. Okay. So, Pedro, if, the, if if that field was going to be replaced, say it was going to be moved, um, is that that essentially a T-ball field right now? Yeah, it's t it's young it's U six and U eight girls softball. Girl softball. Right. So like so a it's, it's an undersized yeah. field, right. basically. If if it was going to be replaced, I mean obviously you well maybe you would build, you know, something the size of, of the, the high school field. But would it be would it be that kind that size field or would it be a little bit bigger than like a regular little league field? Or something like a Dean Park. What? It could it could be like <coughs> one size bigger, but it's not going to be a high school size. I mean, because you, you need right. to have the smaller size fields as well. So. So it just makes it easier to find space if. Right. And if you it's put a, a full blown mm -hmm. yeah. field in like a park. Okay. Can I ask a related question that's got that is a big <coughs> deal, but it's got a lot to do with that? Um, I feel like when uh, my nephews and nieces were playing ball. They used to use the field up behind uh, Wagner, what is now Wagner and Sage or BMW, and near the UMass, there was a field right there. Was that a town field? Was that rented? Does that still that, exist? Um, Shrewsbury Little League rents that from whoever owns that. Whoever owns that, that well, that's yeah. private. That's not okay. Right. But I think they use it. Does it still get used? Is that still? It's used yeah. for T-ball, but it not does, so it's much still for the girls. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. I suppose I haven't. Shows you how old my kids and my nephews and nieces are. Okay. <laughs> all right. I didn't know if that had come and gone, but thank you. Like I said, yeah. almost that, nothing to do with the field. That's all part of UMass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there anything else this evening? Are you going to hit your record, Mo? No, I think I just blew it. Um, <laughs> anyone else have any any comments? No? I have oh. one last question. Hi, right, sure. Sorry. Um, is there a timeline? Outline and I apologize. I was a little bit late about as far as when the decision on the where the Beale School would be going if it was moving and therefore the domino effect of making a decision on this Bob, in general. Bob might be able to. That's the secret. Qu we all we would all like to know the answer to that question. No, the timeline. I think well, Bob knows. The the yeah. We've got two choices. You know, we've got the Cell Street property and then we've got the Glavin property in play right now. Um, I would say in, in a few months that will play out. And then of course you need funding for the school. Then the school begins to churn on. It would probably be 2022 before the door actually opens. So the school will be needed between now and that time. So this is really just pre-planning at this point, which is a good idea. Then you can kind of have a, a roadmap of where to go and where the people uh, sit as far as any decisions that are made. But it's at this point, it's it's not a rush. But as far as actually the building committee um, choosing a site. That's within the next couple of that months. That will happen shortly. Right. In the next couple of months, right? Yeah. And then, um, because there's a timeline with in the process that you have to follow through the MSBA, and um, it's somewhere relatively soon, in the next next couple of months, um, the site has to be picked, and then that keeps moving along in the, in the process. So um, we'll know, I would say, before, before summer, we're going to know where you folks pick you'll know where it's going to be <coughs> we won't right. necessarily know the shape or right we've just got a few it. final studies that the architects are in full battle <coughs> oh, right. like that. That. Yeah. sorry That's right. okay. we're still waiting to get into some of the final uh, geotech work at <coughs> lake street Clavin property. 
that will probably happen mid Katrina, so that's sure. important. Okay. Um, and all this hinges on funding for the new school? Right. Right. Um, the debt exclusion question right now is on schedule for to be at the same time as the state election in November, November, correct? Right. So, um, yeah. If, uh, assuming this, <laughs> if it passes, this will move forward. And if it doesn't, it'll be a new point, and we'll be using Beal for a couple more years. So we'll, we'll have to go back to the drawing boards. But. Order of magnitude on that uh, <coughs> budget, that exclusion, is it between a remote note? It must be known within a number of million. That's, you know, John? It's kind of hard to venture a guess. We're, we're continuing <coughs> to debate certain assumptions. Um, yeah, I, square footage numbers, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't hang a hat on that. You don't even have the size. Okay, I, I mean, we do have a general size of the building, but we not. We're not mm -hmm. there yet to finalize numbers, right? No. I was just looking for a ballpark, you know, five, ten, twenty, whatever. But yeah, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's going to be more than that, Mark. Um, but um, anyways, no, we're not ready for that yet, right? No. Nope. There's been some general discussion, but not, there's nothing's really been zeroed in on. No, very, um, very preliminary numbers have gone to uh, MSBA. Tomorrow That's night, fine. actually, the building committee is coming in to the Board of Selectmen, right? Yes, we are. Um, <coughs> so that might get discussed. Um, do they have information that, that we don't have? Um, so that um, that will be discussed. I think just for <coughs> a discussion about the sites. Uh, so more information we're going to get here tonight. That's for sure. Um, anyone else? Anyone have any other thoughts? Um, then, if not, um, would you like to schedule another meeting for a month from now? So that would be the, yeah, around the end of, we need to be careful. Well, the 23rd is town meeting, right? Yeah. So. April 23rd is town meeting? Yep, the, the special town meeting. Well, what will be our next <coughs> agenda items, roughly? Well, actually, um, I had um, I had hoped to talk to um, Mr. Kane to try to get uh, some more sense of what the of what um, his his thoughts were because he brought this forward to us and the committees of just what um, we would want to have um, by the time the uh, the question comes up at town meeting in the fall um, because people are going to ask what what, it, what are you going to do with the site do you have any idea what it what it could be um, what's involved with it so I was trying to get to see if we could get more of a, a focus on what we want because if you actually look at the charge we're talking about um, identifying resources um, to do what we need to do and I don't think that was really the intent, um, and there were some other things that I thought were a little bit beyond. Um, when you when you go back and read the charge, that were a little bit beyond what this committee would have the capability of doing. And, and in my very brief discussion with him, um, it, it was more to get something of get a sense of what of what the property might sell for, um, what it might be. Um, is it going to be used? So one of the big things was, is it going to be used for, is the intention to use it for um, municipal uses or to try to get it into the private sector and get some um, uh, revenue producing property out of that? And I think well, that's probably... Right now, though, is <coughs> none of the rest of the town government wants it. No. So, so. I get, so we, know, we know now that we'd be looking at some kind of private sector. Um, Right. Involvement, and I think we could talk more about that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much set. But I, people I are going to ask the question. I think ultimately we're going to put this out to bid. Or put it as a town. Time. Yes, as a town, we're going to put this out to bid for either a firm price or graded request for proposals. And I think, um, yeah, I think it would behoove us to maybe come up with the points we want to see in this new development, such as we do not want non-tax-paying 
uses. We want commercial retail. We don't want multifamily, which would add to the school budget. We do want you know, something which will return high value. And I think... Um, and have an impact on downtown. Yes. And I, I, well, and I think we can come up with what those points <coughs> should be and have some type of a scoring system coupled with the auction. For instance, mm -hmm. your price will be increased by 500% if you are a nonprofit. And, well, it will be decreased by 90% if you're a nonprofit. And, you know, if you're proposing multifamily, we're going to punish you for that. <laughs> I, we're going to deduct points. Right. <laughs> and I, I think that's a more sensible direction for us to go in. Right. Right. Because we can all sit here and say, I, I'd love a coffee shop with a little movie theater next door, but until someone's cutting a check to actually buy the property, none of us right. will get anything right. that we want. I did, I don't, I don't know if I told you at the last meeting, I did talk, um, I talked to an architect before the last meeting. Um, I, think, I think I did tell you. And then after that, I, I spoke to um, somebody in the development field and they both said the same thing that you said, RFP, Put it out there. Let the market come back with what what's realistic, because the people in the industry, whatever industry that are in the development industry, have a better sense of what is going to work there than we do. Right. Um, and it, and just put sensible restrictions on it. Um, whatever those might be, is probably the way is is the way to go. But um, I think a big component of this is what the parking study comes back with. And the other, do you remember what the other study was? It had something to do with downtown and defining the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, it was part of the parking. It was park. almost like a mini, I don't want to say a master plan, but. It, it was an overlay, is that what you mean? Well, I think it was talk about would it lead to an, could it lead to an overlay? Um, but it, it, I guess for lack of a better term, it was, it was a, uh, a mini, perhaps a mini master plan or at least a study of what of what could um, work there um, but again that's the cleaning department's going to do that and I think um, once they get uh, moving along I had talked to Kristen Loss about perhaps coming in uh, maybe in a month or so whenever it's appropriate um, w once they get going or maybe Bernie Cahill can tell us what the parking study is pretty obvious. It's shared parking. We're looking to maximize parking. But the other one of it is more is to look at overall development mm -hmm. and, and maybe a long-term plan for what could happen there. So the Beal, the Beal site in any iteration could... Um, could drive it. it could well, drive it could drive it, but it's going to need to be integral to whatever that other plan is. Um, there's got to be some kind of vision for Beal that ties into whatever cleaning department... Um, it's going to come up with um, and probably bring to town meeting um, at some point um, for, for this focus on, on the town center, which is one of the issues identified in the master plan. And you were on that, you were on that steering committee. Yep. So they've got to be integrated so that one's not doing one thing and one's doing the other thing. Yeah, but I think, we're a bit, I think we're a bit early on that. My concern with <coughs> dependency on the master plan is it's very retail-oriented what the master plan wanted to see downtown. Well, that was written before, <coughs> and I'll say it again, Amazon began slaughtering everyone. No, that was, that's only been, what, two think, years? But don't you think no, there's... Master plans are no, it's been a while. Our master plan? About 18 months. No. Is that, that's the master plan implementation committee? But the master the plan master was... The master plan implementation before, committee was last year at the town meeting. Right, but yeah. then the master plan was a couple years before Maybe that. Years it was ago. only a year before that. It was longer than that. Well, so. whatever. It yeah. isn't. It isn't that long. Amazon had already destroyed the book industry by <laughs> right. that point. Um, right. But um, yeah, and and I think obviously, just like the master plan, um, you, you need to take a look at it and see if it's relevant to the time that you're in, 
um, as opposed to the time it was written. Because um, if people could predict the future, um, they'd probably be very rich and would control the world. And we might not even need parking in 10 years. Yeah. If everything comes true, self-driving cars, and there's a lot of talk about that, really. Yeah. So. So that's something that, I mean, down the road we could talk about. But I think the idea of looking at the entire center and defining what the center is going to be, because that is part of what they're talking about. What would, when you talk about the center, what is the center going to be? How far down Maple Ave, how far down Main Street in both directions, um, you know, Route 140. Right. So um, it's, it's still whatever, whatever it is, they, it needs to be, the, the vision for the Beale site needs to be integrated with the vision for the center. And I think that's what we're doing is just taking all these different pieces. We, we did a tour of the building. I think that was eye-opening for a lot of people. It certainly was for me. The zoning, the market analysis, the master plan, the new developments on parking and analysis, the grant money, putting all these pieces together and kind of seeing where it takes us rather than kind of coming in with some preset notion about what we're going to do or not do. But I know a lot of this has been enlightening to me. And I think as we develop this and we continue to drill down on some of these things, these plans – um, input from folks, I think it'll kind of bring us to a point where we can develop some recommendations and some kind of big picture vision of where it's going to go. But I think it's it's been interesting to see. I, particularly me, the, the tour of the school I thought was very helpful. Um, and some of the comments from other folks, just kind of putting these pieces together and, again, seeing where it takes us. I'm sorry, the master plan was... <coughs> 2016. I was thinking of the uh, open space no, plan. No, it wasn't that long ago. Two years. Yeah. It was. It was started about what a year or two before that. Three, three or four years ago. Was it but the final, point? yeah, right. was yeah. March 2016. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> Find a date that works towards the end of the month to float it around. Um, yeah. Do you want to do that offline? Do you want to do it now? So we could. Could do it offline because we're going to see with which meeting rooms are available within okay. that week. Although I, I suppose Bob, <laughs> fallback position if we can't go anywhere could be Bill, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be hard to get in there. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, any more? Yeah. Any more questions? No. no. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any anyone else? Well, you know it. From starting to get comments on Facebook, I thought we actually were going to see um, at least a handful of people here. Um, yeah, but, was, you know, I it was, might just be that it's maybe it was too early to do it. Maybe it needs to be closer to uh, maybe we have to have a public hearing and we have more information. And it's closer to um, when the vote is going to be on the new project. Just going to say, and where people are more focused on it. In a lot of ways, this is very, very abstract for the Right, public. exactly. I've used my wife as an example. She's like, now, is there a new school? I'm like, well, well no, not yet. She's like, well, when's that going to happen? I'm like, well, five years from now. So I think it's um, as much as kudos for being ahead of the curve on planning, I think it falls onto very um, existential or abstract years based given its, um, its longevity. So. Well, you know, it's funny because I think there's a lot of opinions on what should be done for it. it just, we'll see what happens. And anyway, so if no one else in the audience would like to be heard, um, Chair, then I would ask for a motion to close the hearing. Make a motion to adjourn. Close the hearing. Close the hearing. Okay. Second. 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 Motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. This hearing is closed. A motion to adjourn would be in order. That's right. I would just like to make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Voted. Okay.